Welcome to our series, Meet Our Investment Partners. Today I'm joined by Roger Lloyd, CEO of Palisade Investment Partners. Welcome, Roger. Thank you, Dania. Nice to be here with you. Very nice to see you, and in particular, very nice and excited to introduce you to our shareholders and talk about Palisade, its business and strategy. Now, I know you've been in the market and in, in this industry for a long time. Would you mind sharing more background uh, about your career journey with our shareholders? Sure. Uh, yeah, it has been a long time. It feels like my whole life in the infrastructure in some way, shape or form. But I started as a chartered accountant um, in, the, in the, the boom times of insolvency um, of the late 80s, the recession we had to have back yeah. then. Um, but, uh, but moved into Bankers Trust mid-90s, um, you know, infrastructure was becoming an, uh, well, an asset class or, or something to think about for private sector investment. Um, but that was more as, a, as an advisor, mm -hmm. um, financial advisor to infrastructure assets generally. Um, so Bankers Trust, Macquarie Bank bought uh, Bankers Trust in 99. And I sort of mid, you know, 2000, 2005, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to get a longer term view of the world and moved into the investing side. So firstly Perpetual and then um, Palisade. And for, that was 14 years ago we, we established Palisade. Palisade, it is considered as one of the most established infrastructure fund managers in the mid-market infrastructure. Yeah. And often when I talk about mid-market infrastructure, people do ask, what, what do you mean by mid-market infrastructure? Because obviously we get so much information in the media about larger transactions, mm. but not many investors see what's going on in the middle segment of the market. Yeah. Um, mm. So maybe some history of policy and why you are quite unique in this market. Yeah. Well, from the outset, we focused on mid-market, you know, and we, we saw a gap in the, in, in the market then in terms of where people are investing. So rather focus on those big end privatizations that are very, you know, they've been heavily publicized, big prices being paid. Yeah. We focused on, on, and, you know, I, I wouldn't say invented the term, but took, took that term on being yeah. mid-market. And it really is a matter of not focusing on the, on the major capital city infrastructure generally. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you look at our portfolio, a lot of regional um, regional assets. Yes. Um, so rather than Sydney Airport, so we've we've got Sunshine, Sunshine Coast, Coast Airport yeah. and Darwin Airport. Yeah. So it's it's that rung down, less competition in, in the market, um, our ability then to actually get majority stakes in those assets, yes. so we can influence management more. Um, so that's been important. Generally, a, a less competitive environment mm -hmm. uh, where most of our deals have been, we've managed to actually transact on a bilateral basis yes. or a less competitive. Uh, auction process, which generally drives prices up. And less competitive means more attractive entry valuations, which then translates in more attractive investment returns, returns, returns to investors. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Particularly, particularly um, because it, it goes to yield, right? If you're paying 12 or 14 times earnings for an asset rather than 25 to 30 times that the bigger guys are paying for the, for the larger assets, mm -hmm. it's pretty simple, right? Yeah. It means you get a 7 or 8 percent yield rather than 3 percent yield. Yes. Yes, and yield. Yeah, that everyone is on this hunt for yield, um, and I'd say infrastructure plays always such an important part within the portfolio when we look at yielding yeah. or income-producing um, investment strategies. So, what are the actual investment benefits um, going into this asset class? Yield, obviously. Yes. Um, particularly in the mid-market, uh, you know, over, the, over sort of ten years now, we've delivered twelve percent growth returns mm -hmm. you know, year on year, which is, which is one of the, the key features or yeah. benefits we get from infrastructure is that stability of return. Yes. Right? Um, but of that 12%, 7% of it, of it is, has been in the form of yield income to, to the investor. So those are probably the, the, the key yeah. things. That, that stability is important, that, that generation of long-term sustainable cash flow um, and, and a linkage into CPI as well. You know, a lot of our assets have got an explicit CPI linkage, mm -hmm. so that inflation hedge is important, yeah. uh, particularly at the moment. At the moment, um, yes. Uh, we're seeing it, and and, we, and the portfolio has benefited, benefited value-wise from from the increased inflation. Yeah. Um, and as long as we're hedging against our interest rates at the same time, we're not getting the the negative. 
from, from the high inflation, high interest rate environment. Looking forward, what are the opportunities that you are likely to invest in within Diversified Infrastructure Fund? So it's still relatively diverse, but if I look at, look at what we're, we're currently focusing on, definitely renewables, right? Particularly with the change of government, um, an increase in, in, in the targets that the government has set, yes. reducing, reducing emissions, the whole decarbonisation story. We've got one of the bigger portfolios of independent, uh, independent portfolios of generation. Of, um, mm -hmm. through, solar through renewables, and wind. solar and wind, yeah. um, and that will continue. You know, there's an enormous amount of money has to be spent on on getting to the targets. Yeah. So we're going to be a part of that. Um, we've, we've already got one gigawatt of renewable assets that we manage. That'll double. More, it yes. has to double yes. to, to meet Absolutely. the targets we're trying to. Um, so I think the decarbonisation story is really important. Um, I think the other thing that that we've seen through particularly through COVID, but it's been there for a long time, is, is the increase in the digital space, yeah, the, the, the use of, yes. of digital assets, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they're talking things like fibre, uh, data centres, yep. towers, um, and those are assets that we're looking, looking at now. Yeah. What about mm -hmm. um, specifically when we think and talk about ESG? Yep. Um, now, I know within Diversified Infrastructure Fund there is exposure to ESG-related strategies, yep. but as a business, what is your stand when yeah. we think about ESG? Yeah, I mean, I know it's a topic of late, um, but we've been uh, you know, adopting our ESG standards for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, we've set five priority goals. Um, that with within Palisade, so broad, ESG is so broad. Yeah. Uh, and so we focused on, on governance obviously being a, being a key. And um, the climate in two ways, sustainability, mm -hmm. environmental sustainability is really important. Climate change we take into account as well. Because we're in the regional market, we also look at community. So making sure that we are looking after communities that we're serving yeah. uh, with the assets we've got, we see that as really important. And also promoting diversity. Mm -hmm. um, throughout, not just within Palisade, but yeah, throughout the assets. And uh, so those are our priority goals, and we embed that into everything we do, mm -hmm. um, uh, both on the investment side, but also the management. So that the integration of ESG into our the whole of life investment management is really, really important. Yeah. In terms of investors within Diversified Infrastructure Fund, mm. who would be your you know, average investor in the fund and is it really an accessible investment opportunity for retail investors? Sadly it hasn't really been accessible to um, re retail um, and I think that's it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the type of asset, the size of asset, the uh, various things that go into a limiting access for, for retail. So yeah. typically our investors are institutional, mm -hmm. um, you know the, 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 the major super funds yeah, both Australia and globally. Yeah. We have global capital as well. Um, so it is a little bit limited, to, well, it is limited to the institutional market yeah. on, the, on the whole. Um, I mean, our minimum investment of $5 million, uh, not that yeah. we have too many investors at $5 million. Yes. We're generally aware about that. Well, yeah, and, and I think <coughs> that's, um, you know, when we talk to our shareholders, um, bringing these high quality businesses, high quality portfolios, to retail shareholders um, is really important when they think about their investment portfolio. So I'm mm. really excited that we have this opportunity to partner with you. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you, Daniel.